Here are 101 ways to use AI in your daily life to hopefully make your life easier, happier, and more productive. I'll be spinning this video roughly into different life areas, starting off with general productivity, then work productivity, day-to-day -day life stuff, personal finances, learning things, career slash business, relationships, and then finally miscellaneous ones that I cannot categorize. A portion of this video is sponsored by HubSpot. Before we get started, I do want to give a quick overview of the tools that I'll be showing in this video. On a day-to-day -day basis, I tend to stick to a few foundational models and products as opposed to buy subscriptions for like very specialized products. Because honestly, if you're good at prompt engineering, you can get a lot out of these general products. Which by the way, if you want to get better at, I have a video linked over here. And if you can complete it, you will be better than like 98% of people at prompt engineering. Anyways, I categorize the tools into three categories. The first category is chatbots. And I like to stick to ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude. The second category is agents slash specialized apps. In this category includes Madness, which is a generalized AI agent that can do a lot of things. Perplexity, which I like to think of it as like ChatGPT plus search. It's like a specialized AI app for search. Notebook LN is going to be an app that shows up a lot in the learning category. NA10 for designing agentic workflows. And OpenAI's Agents SDK for building agents with code. And third category is Vibe Coding Tools. I often like to Vibe code like little apps and things myself, as opposed to having to pay for like different subscriptions. And it's really not that hard, I promise. So there are a lot of different Vibe Coding Tools. And if you're a beginner, I would would recommend starting off with something like Lovable or Vault if you're more intermediate, then transition into maybe Replit or Firebase Studio, which is also free. And if you are more advanced, you can go with Cursor, Windsurf, or Claude Code. So me personally, because I do have a coding background, I tend to stick with Cursor, Windsurf, as well as Claude Code. But don't worry, you don't need to know how to code in order to use these tips and tricks and use cases I'm going to show you. I'm going to start off with simple but still very powerful use cases before going to more advanced use cases like using agents and vibe coding your own apps. So I promise there will be a little bit of something for everybody, and hey, maybe you'll be inspired to learn some of the new tools once you see the cool things that you can do with it. To keep the video snappy, I'm not going to go super in depth for each of these use cases. I will put on screen the tool that I'm using. Now, without further ado, let's go. Starting off with general productivity. Starting off with a very simple use case, but I literally do this like multiple times a day. And that is just taking pictures of objects and asking AI to identify them. Like, what is this flower? Can I eat this mushroom? And that's a cool shoe. What shoe is it? You can also upload pictures and ask ChatGPT to help you fix things. For example, a few months ago, my toilet started leaking. So I just took a picture of the toilet and asked which lever I should be moving around and in which direction. And it worked. You can upload device manuals for AI assisted troubleshooting and guidance. Do very specific and targeted searches that are better than Google. Like what kind of financial assets should I be investing? in if I'm a Canadian currently living in Hong Kong and making US dollars. The best AI agents released in the past six months for solo founders managing client work. Create travel itineraries that are connecting together multiple destinations. Like I want to explore Hong Kong from one chai today from 9am until 10pm. Suggest a route that hits three hidden coffee shops to work from, a sea view, and ends at a night market, all by foot or tram. Use structured frameworks to guide very specialized responses. Like evaluating startup ideas by using Alex Hormonzi's four-part $100 million offer framework. Organizing different tasks to do by using an Eisenhower matrix. Use first principles thinking to evaluate the assumptions that you have. Like, is it actually true that you need to go to the gym to get fit or that you need to make more money to save money? When I'm sitting in a meeting or a lecture that has some sort of slides or presentation, I like to take pictures of the slides and ask ChatGPT to compile them together and summarize. And if you actually record a presentation in video form, you can upload that video into Google AI Studio where it's able to process it and generate transcripts and do anything you want with it too. This also works with any type of videos, including YouTube videos. I do this a lot with YouTube videos. Get purchase recommendations and product research assistance, like which running shoe should I buy? What are some tripod suggestions? If it's something I care a lot about and I want to dig deeper into, I would turn on deep research. Like what are the most in-demand tech careers that don't require coding but still involve AI? Compare and contrast Eastern and Western models of medicine. Perplexity is amazing at curating news from all the different types of sources, including social media. Now let's move on to work productivity. I really like to start my days by rambling about all the things that I think I have to do and then asking ChatGPT to actually organize it and prioritize it into a to-do list. Because my to-do list unfortunately often have like 10 to 20 different items, whenever I have to switch context and work on something else, I always like to ask AI to bookmark that task and generate a summary and action item. So when I go back to that work stream, I can jump in immediately, summarize meetings, check emails for you and summarize those too. Write emails, write reports, pretty much write everything. And the times in which I actually start to write something, I would ask it to edit for grammar, for clarity and for changing the tone, like say from casual to professional. Using AI for structured brainstorming with different levels of depth. This is called answers leveling and is a really powerful tool to get more creative, specific ideas. Here's an example on screen. You usually want to ask AI to do level three or level four. I also love using the voice functionality for brainstorming and thinking through problems. For example, literally earlier today, I was talking to ChatGPT about different ways that we can improve our AI agents bootcamp or other products that the audience might like. Voice practice for negotiation skills and scenarios, like role playing a tough conversation you might be having 
chatting with your boss or negotiating your salary. I don't know about you, but I hate those little menu items and having to click on different things to get to like a specific feature to click. So now I just take photos of the interface. Like which of these 20 tools can I use to blur things? Like how do I remove this object on Photoshop? If it's more complex, you can also use Google AI Studio's real-time streaming feature and you can share your screen and ask AI to direct you to go through all the steps as well. So currently I have this picture on Photoshop and I want to remove the turtle on this very back of the image. How do I do that? You will want to use the lasso tool to draw a selection around the turtle in the very back. Okay, I did that. Now what? This will remove the turtle and try to fill the area with what's around it. And then I can just click OK. There you go. <laughs> Really fast way to create tutorials too. Real-time streaming is also great for real-time narration. Like actually for work, I had to watch this football game and figure out what was happening and I know nothing about football. So I just asked AI to narrate what was happening for me. Player in black is on the ground. The score is now Arsenal 0, West Ham 1. Translate between different languages. You can do this through text, to pictures, audio, and video. Analyze large PDF documents and ask it to extract specific relevant information. Great when you have to go through massive reports. I did this recently with the Claude for release report that was over 100 pages long. Create product requirements documents for features and products that you want to make. Create presentations and slides. Claude and Manus are freaking amazing at this. Screen and analyze resumes or whatever other documents, just stick it all in there. Then you can extract information and ask it to organize it into tables. Also great if you're like me and you like to take really, really messy notes. Like literally to make this video, for the past couple of weeks, I had been noting down all the different things that I've been using AI for and it's all like ugly and messy and I just combined them all together into a nice list. Extract and transform data from various sources. You can mix audio, video, numerical data, unstructured data, and and just ask AI to combine them together neatly. Then you can format and export data in any way that you want. That can be CSV forms, video forms, audio forms, text form, lists, tables, even as graphs and visualizations and infographics. And to take it a step even further, you can ask Claude to create an interactive dashboard for you. For example, I have ones for custom financial dashboards for tracking income and expenses, data visualizations, and key performance metrics. Use AI to create documentation for processes, like operational processes and technical documentation too. Make digital clones of yourself or other people with permission. Use Madness to create your website. Create fully deployed websites. Create a calculator for anything, like calculating housing and mortgage rates, how much money you should be investing, meal prep budgets, macronutrients, sleep debt, caffeine tolerance, literally anything. Now something a little bit more advanced. Remember how I said earlier you can use Perplexity to do search and research about pretty much anything. Perplexity also does have an API where you can create workflows and do these searches and research in bulk. And you can do this completely with no code. For example, you can upload a Google Sheets with all the tools that you want to research. Get Perplexity to do the research for all of these different tools and summarize it for you. You can even pipe it along to different tools to do other things too. As you can see, there are all these ways of using AI, but it would only work if you're good at prompt engineering. So if you're looking to start improving your prompting skills, I highly recommend that you check out this free prompt engineering quick start guide that I made in collaboration with HubSpot Media. It includes a step-by-step -step guide to creating great AI prompts and also tips to get better results. My favorite part is that there is a flow from a bad to good to great prompt to show how you can improve a prompt. If you can think like this, you'll be so much better at prompting and be so much more productive at everything that you do. So do check it out at this link over here, also linked in description. Thank you so much HubSpot Media for creating this free resource with me to empower people to learn AI and for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now back to the video. I like to vibe code small automations. And if you give an API key to Madness, it's usually able to do some types of automations very easily, like scraping my YouTube comments. If you're a bit more comfortable with code, you can also vibe code these automations, like scheduling cron jobs to update certain files or run different programs. Automate sending out emails to a lot of different people by vibe coding a script for Gmail. Instead of paying for specialized app, I also vibe code my own apps, like a Pomodoro timer tracking app, my very own finance tracker app, an app where I can upload and search through all of my favorite prompts. Because we also work with consulting clients, I often vibe code demos as well. And finally, building agentic workflows and full-on AI agents. I like NAN for no code and OpenAI's Agents SDK for code implementations. So many different use cases. Lead generation, lead automation, prototyping, customer service, querying databases, generating reports, invoice management, survey management, scanning security, etc, 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 etc. Anything you can possibly think of. I have entire videos going through agent fundamentals and how to build agents. And just FYI, I do also run a agents bootcamp where I teach you all about agents and you build at least for agents throughout the course of 28 days. We sold out within 40 hours just to the waitlist last time, so we didn't even publicly announce it. So if you are interested in the next cohort, do sign up for the waitlist linked over here, also in description if you want. New category, daily life stuff. 
I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that really hates thinking about daily things like what to eat and what to wear. So I do this so often. I take pictures of my clothes and I also take pictures of whatever I have in the fridge and ask AI to come up with different outfit and food ideas. Also to generate weekly meal plans and shopping lists. Great if you're trying to reduce grocery costs. Get room decoration and interior design suggestions. Apparently my background will look a lot better if it had some green vegetation. So I just ordered that. Get preliminary guidance for health issues and where to seek more professional help. For example, I have neck issues and also like pain in my scapula, but I didn't know what kind of doctor I should be looking for. So I asked the AI. Figuring out the types of insurances to buy and optimizing the sequence in which you buy these insurances because apparently that matters too. It's a big thing in Hong Kong. Optimizing taxes. And speaking of which, let's now make a smooth transition into personal finances. Creating personalized financial plans, including saving plans and investment plans. What kind of apps to be using? I recommend using deep research for this. Also for planning and analyzing retirement fund strategies. Most countries have certain retirement accounts that you can take advantage of. I personally also built a workflow to help me better track my expenses. Every time I buy something, I can take a picture of a receipt or just have it in text and numbers and send it through WhatsApp. And an agent would be able to take that information and categorize everything and compile that together into a database. And I get a daily, weekly, and monthly report on how I'm spending my money. I'm also currently in the process process of building a workflow that can manage and automate my finances better because my certain financial situation is a little bit more complex. An emphasis on food with large purchases like steak and chocolate totally $4,000 making food the most dominant category. Great if you're trying to reduce grocery costs. Next section, learning. My favorite. AI is so amazing for learning. It's basically an on-demand tutor that is very, very knowledgeable and is available 24-7. You can get explanations and answers for pretty much anything. What I find the most useful is to get completed worked examples of a subject, like a worked example of a physics problem that I can follow step by step. AI can create comprehensive study plans on certain subjects, like if you want to learn about AI agents. Create mnemonics for better memory retention, one of my favorite techniques. Create mock exams and quizzes. Use the Socratic method of learning, a really great learning technique. You know how a lot of nonfiction, like self-help, productivity, like business kind of books would often have like questions and exercises throughout the book. Well, instead of having to flip them and actually find these questions and exercises, you can just ask AI to extract these questions and make them into a workbook. For learning languages, create voice content for different languages. This is a game changer when you're trying to immerse yourself in a language and you can completely control how advanced you go. I use Notebook LM to create a bunch of different podcasts for learning Japanese. Generate Anki flashcards from study notes. Use voice functionality to practice your listening and your hearing when you're learning a foreign language. Convert documents into podcast format. Use perplexity to research and search all the different content related to a topic and make it all into a custom study plan for you. Modify learning content into whatever modality that you prefer. Instead of just reading from a textbook, maybe you prefer having in video format or audio format or as infographics. Straight out, just ask AI to create a full course on a specific topic, like a course on MCP. Madness is great for this. Next category is careers and business. It is a pretty rough job market out there. Use AI to help you create comprehensive job search strategies. Research most in-demand skills in your domain and create a study plan to learn them. Review your resume. Ask AI to give you a thorough review and critique of your resume, your portfolio, and everything else. Voice functionality for mock interviews. Ask for creative ways to stand out when applying for a role. On the business side, generate lists of potential job candidates. Create onboarding material and project documentation. Create business plans. Figure out business structure and incorporation processes. By the way, these are all things that I recently did after after I started a company. Research and plan your business insurance needs. Build and design websites. Design marketing pamphlets. Create business cards. Pretty old school, but in Hong Kong, they still use business cards. Create contracts, not legal advice, but to be honest, I do it. Write company policies. Do research into different applicable funds. There are a lot of government and private funds out there that are just like giving out free money and people just don't know about them. Next category is relationships. So this is going to be a very short list, but in all honesty, AI has completely transformed my relationships because I think I'm not very naturally good at relationships. You can ask AI for relationship advice for like different scenarios and how you should behave. I also use the voice functionality so often to practice difficult conversations ahead of time. This has been such a game changer. And finally, miscellaneous things that I just think are cool. Create cartoons and manga for stories and for educational content. Edit images like changing the color of your clothes, getting people to look like they're dancing, changing the patterns on the walls, and just like everything that has to do with coding, I use AI for now. All right, that is all that I have for you guys today. That was a lot, 101 to be specific. Let me know in the comments which ones are your favorite use cases. And please let me know in the comments as well what use cases that you use that I did not cover. I am super interested to know. And I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.